related trends that have influenced your current investment strategy? For me, I've been liking a lot InsureTech, which for me it's like the new fintech. A lot of, of, of it going around that. In Latin America, there's a bunch of startups tapping that, that market. One of my good friends in InsureTech and HR is here. The second one would be HR Tech. I really love HR Tech. And I, 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 I'm not considered an expert in Web3 or blockchain or crypto, probably you guys are, but those, those two for me are I driving our, our fund in, in, in Latin America and Latinx in the US. From our standpoint, um, with a lot of food and beverage, we're, we're paying attention to, to what consumers are paying attention to. And so um, we try not to fall in love with fads and say that we're allergic to trend. Um, we, we really wanna know, is this actually better for consumers? Is this product and, and what's different about it going to have staying power? Um, in terms of mega trends inside of our industry, we actually kind of look to flow against the grain. Um, we look for genuine product differentiation. Um, you know, there's, I don't know how many uh, RTD canned cocktails came to market this year. And that's not to knock any, any founder in the space, seriously, but it makes it really hard for somebody in our seat to evaluate and say what's different about this one versus that one. And then it really turns into a marketing game. And that's not a game as an investor that we wanna put a ton of stock in. Um, so we're really looking for product differentiation um, and, and products that are genuinely better for consumers, not just following on a trend. Yeah, I mean, personally spent a lot of time in um, vertical solutions, payments, um, software marketplaces and a lot of lagging industries, middle of the country stuff. You know, here in Austin and middle of the country, there's a lot of that. Um, when I when I got into venture in 15 or 16, I was spending a lot of time in healthcare education, childcare, things where uh, the cost of those services was rising two to three times above inflation. Um, those got really hot during COVID. So my general thesis is to stay away from what other investors are trying to stay, uh, what other investors are hyped on, right? So that was Web3 really the past two years. And that being said, I think there's a lot of, interesting longer tail solutions that could come in that space. And so I, I like to um, skate where the puck isn't in some ways, um, at least on the investor side. Yeah, if I were to give you the, the non-answer, the non-answer from our perspective is because we're Texas and middle of the country focused, we're less thematic in that like if we only did one theme, there probably wouldn't be enough for us to build a, a firm on. And so we're all kind of B2B tech generalists you know, that said, like we've done, and I've, I've led a number of investments in, in construction tech, it's just an under technology usage industry, right? And seen a lot of opportunity there, have worked on a number of deals in FinTech, and again, just, you know, lots of digitization happening. And then, you know, software developers are really expensive, and so I'm always intrigued by things that make software developers, you know, more efficient, more effective, um, things like that. I'm going to add one thing really quick for any consumer CPG folks in the room. Something that we are paying a ton of attention to is omni-channel. You know, we watch the D2C wave come, and I'm not saying that it's gone, but it's changed a lot in the last 18 months. Um, and so where we're paying a ton of attention inside of our portfolio companies, and as we evaluate future deals from a trend perspective, does this have omni-channel potential? Does this have direct consumer? e-commerce marketplace and then on shelf at retail does it have the ability to sell through multiple channels and in some instances have a b2b component to it as well um, having a singular sales channel for us is you know talking about an entrepreneur's red flag as a business that's a red flag if it has a singular sales channel awesome i'm sure there are more questions out there sorry we're not able to answer everybody's question tonight but um, if you lovely gentlemen would mind just staying up here for a few minutes after we finish to answer anyone's questions, they can come up here. Uh, final question for the evening is, how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way they can reach you? So I'm glad to, to, to give my email and we have a, uh, in our webpage, we have a type form web that we do see. It's an AI powered uh, type form. And, uh, and I'll give my email to anyone that wants to get a hold of us. LinkedIn, it's great as well. The exact same answer. There is a, it's info at midnightvp.com. Um, it actually goes directly to my inbox. So I do read them and, and we, we do respond to everything. Um, but it's a Bodney, first initial last name at midnightvp.com. 
LinkedIn, all the same stuff. Would love to talk to anybody interested in having a conversation with us. Yeah, email John, J-O-N at muckercapital.com. We just um, opened an office, um, well, six months ago, and uh, right by South Congress. Um, so hopefully we can do some events, maybe with ABA. Um, and thanks uh, to y'all for putting this on. Yeah, we're, we're, we're easy first name people. It's Aaron, so A.A. Ron, if anyone's seen the sketch. Uh, at uh, s3vc.com. Uh, yeah, thanks again for having us. Yeah, thank you guys for your attention and just honoring these awesome men who gave of their time tonight. Uh, please just go ahead and mingle. Keep meeting people. If you have questions, you want to talk to them further, come on up here and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.